Dottie Herman is the vice chair at Douglas Elliman Real Estate LLC. A lot of people in New York City know Douglas Elliman very well. And we've invited Dottie Herman here to talk about Women's Entrepreneurship Day. But before we get there, Dottie, got to ask you, because a lot of realtors in New York City are saying that this market and other big cities, which saw big downturns, during the COVID uh, pandemic, the, the worst of the crisis, are now seeing a big upswing. Can you help us understand what might be happening in urban markets? It's crazy. I, I, when I say crazy, probably one of the biggest markets we've had. Uh, I think that, you know, when we had the pandemic, everyone was kind of just, oh my God, what's going to happen? And I think it's, you know, so we had that slump when we just started the pandemic. You couldn't even get into a building. And then, you know, people fled. But then people, you know, really, whether they went to the Hamptons or Connecticut or left from Florida, after a couple of months being there, they're like, you know what? There's no place like New York. We don't want to be there forever. Very savvy uh, investors and savvy real estate people realize, hey, New York City is never a bargain. So that was an opportunity to personally buy something bigger. Um, if you were a New Yorker and you knew you were going to be there, it was just a matter of when. And also with the whole new trends, which are here to stay from COVID, where people do not have to work at home, you know, they worked at home more, that home became more important. And they wanted space and they wanted outdoor space. And what better time to do that and trade up when the city was... At that time, down in price, you know, it's it's catching up. It's close to where it was pre-pandemic. Um, the streets are busy. The restaurants, you can't get a reservation. Now the foreigners are back. Uh, so I think that you still have a small window where you can still get a little bit less than you could have pre-pandemic, but that's really narrowing. And uh, the future of, you know, New York City, although it has a few things, a few challenges left, is really going to be even bigger and better. And a little different. A lot of young people who were priced out of New York City are able to buy now. So it's all it good. Yeah, Daddy, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about pricing, because when you and I spoke back in the summer, you were talking about the fact that it wasn't going to remain a buyer's market for that much longer. It seems to be a similar story today. How do sales today compare to what we saw pre-pandemic back in 2019. Are we back to those levels? I would say, you know, I mean, across the board, I would say not quite, but close. I mean, that that margin is narrowing, you know. And again, you know, real estate, you can't compare everything uh, because everything is different. Of course, you know, in any market, there's always somebody who needs to make a quick deal or has to get out and will do sell cheaper. But for the most part, I'd say the prices are very close to 2019. And the amount of sales, I think, have been at least 10 or 15. We've had more sales in the last 10 or 15 years. I want to switch gears. My aunt, by the way, used to be, Dottie Dubin used to be a real estate agent at Douglas Elliman, but she was also an entrepreneur. She had many different uh, businesses and careers in her lifetime. And you've just taken part in the United Nations uh, Summit celebrating female entrepreneurs. What do we need to do at this point in time to keep pushing women forward in that role as entrepreneur? That's a really big cause of mine. And actually, I think 2014 or 2015, I was a keynote speaker at, there. Uh, first of all, you start with venture capital money. If I'm not, I mean, don't quote me exactly, but if I'm not mistaken, maybe three to five, I don't think it's even 5% of venture capital money goes to women. So we have to really invest more in women. Uh, we don't. I mean, venture capital money goes to men. And people like myself and Wendy Diamond, who heads up that organization, um, we are really doing mentorships. We're working with women. And more, pe well, more women have to get out there and help women. But it's also financing because, you know, you want to be an entrepreneur, whether you're a male or, or a, you know, a female. You have to have the financing for it. And that's where I, women have a big disadvantage. Um, so we're really working hard on on working with 
you know, venture capitalists and people who believe in women who I think, by the way, they're missing the boat. I think they make great work. They, they really work hard and really supporting them. I, I don't think there was much support for women entrepreneurs. I, ju- I got very lucky. I, I really did. Uh, I borrowed a lot of money. I was young, but I, I was working for a company that believed in women. Thank goodness. 